Hello, everybody. We are at the top of the hour. Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are powered by StriveScan. My name is Sabelle Rasim. I'm your facilitator for this evening. As we all know, time flies when you are having a great time. And so we're going to have a great time. But before we do and we learn about these amazing institutions, I just have a few housekeeping items for you all to just keep in mind. First and foremost, we encourage questions. Please ask questions. But in order to do so, you're gonna to have to click that Q&A button down at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. So use that Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. And I stress, at any time. We don't have at the end a live Q&A session with your questions, so please do not wait until the last minute to ask those questions. Also, when you're asking questions, please uh, make sure to address the institution that the question is for, so we all know who the question goes to. Also, this is a uh, webinar style type of virtual college fair, which means that you are muted and your video is turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you as an attendee, and so therefore that Q&A button is just as important. Uh, also, fun little fact, although your chat is disabled on your end as an attendee, still check the chat if you see some notifications pop up because we have our presenters adding in some important links or their contact information for you to check out. Uh, disregard the signing up for more sessions for this evening. We are out of sessions for this evening, but you're more than welcome to check out strivescan.com uh, for the recording, because guess what? A recording will be available of the session as well as all other sessions. And again, you can find that at strivescan.com backslash New Jersey. Now, without further ado, I would love to get started. So we have Marywood University first. All right. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Sarah Polinchak. Um, I am an admissions counselor at Marywood University. Uh, Marywood University is located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, we are in Northeastern Pennsylvania, very close to the city of Scranton, um, but just tucked outside right in a little neighborhood. Um, some fast facts about Marywood. Um, we have about 2000 undergraduate students, about 1000 graduate students. Um, average class size is about 30 to 35 in your liberal arts curriculum and about 20 to 25 in your major. Um, you can see listed on this slide, are some different retention rates that we have. Um, also, we always love to highlight that 99.7% of our class of 2019 is employed or pursuing graduate studies in their major. Um, we really pride ourselves on being a day one school. Um, so that means that from your very first day as a Marywood student, you will be in your major. Um, we have architecture students that get a design problem on the first day, you'll be in your design studio classes your very first semester. Um, aviation students, we have a flight simulator um, in one of our buildings, so you'll be flying on the first semester. Um, education, nutrition, nursing, um, TV and radio broadcast, you can see all the things there that we provide as well. Um, so we are very hands on at Marywood. Um, we get your feet wet right from the beginning. Um, so just to make sure that that's definitely what you want to study while you're here with us for four or five years. Um, we have a lot of different ways to get involved on campus. Um, so we have over 100 different clubs and organizations, um, whether it's departmental, um, a fraternity and sorority, um, whether you can be an orientation assistant, um, resident assistant, anything like that. Um, we were awarded first place in excellence in programming. Um, so you can see our orientation leaders on the side there. Um, so there is really something for everyone at Marywood. Um, if there's something that you want that we don't offer. Um, just need you, two other friends, and a, um, a facilitator, and you guys can make your own club. Um, so we definitely have a lot of options for everyone. Some of our smaller events um, on campus, um, bingo is always a huge one, um, different athletic tournaments like capture the flag, um, different game shows. We also have big events like Flapjack Fest, which is during um, finals week. All of the staff and faculty at Marywood make the students um, pancakes, bacon, all that kind of stuff, um, just as a way to say thank you for a great semester. Um, so we have a little bit of everything going on on campus and then also off campus. If I have any um, office fans on here, um, we are right outside of the city of Scranton, like I mentioned. Um, um, so there's a lot to do um, in the city, um, things like, you know, the Viewmont Mall, we have different aquariums, um, a lot of shopping down there, um, a lot of like cute little mom and pop um, shops, restaurants, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also are very close to the Poconos, about a half hour, 45 minutes away. Um, so if anyone's into skiing or snowboarding, um, snow tubing, we have a ton of that going on, as well as Montage Mountain, which is right in our backyard, only about 10 minutes away. Um, it's a concert venue. It's also a water park in the summer and a ski resort in the winter. Um, so there's plenty of things to do off campus. 
any trip that you go on off campus um, is free. Um, so we only require a $5 deposit to get on the bus. On your way home, you get the $5 back. Um, so you'll see in some of these pictures here, you know, our students go to Broadway shows, um, whitewater rafting, New York City day trips, things like that. So we offer a lot of things off campus to get our students off campus as well. Um, study abroad, we have a lot of different programs available. Um, we have semester long placements, depending on which major you're interested in. Um, specifically art and architecture go to Florence, Italy every year. Um, nutrition goes to Barcelona, Spain. Um, and you'll see over here, we have art students that are going to the Great Wall of China. Um, so we have different um, placements, like I said, semester long, uh, winter break, you can go for the summer, something like that. So we have over a different hundred different universities that you can study at worldwide. If anybody's interested in athletics, um, we are division three. Uh, we have 22 varsity teams. They're all listed on here. Our newest being rugby. Um, so if anybody is interested in speaking with a coach, um, all of our information is on our website. You can get the coach's information that way as well. So we have rolling admissions at Marywood. Um, that means that you can apply whenever you'd like. Um, you can use the Common Application or the Marywood app. Both of them are free. Um, once we receive everything we need from you, which is listed at the bottom, um, you'll hear back from us in about seven to 10 business days. Um, so we don't have early action or early decision um, because we do get back to students pretty quickly. Um, so we'll need a completed application, your high school transcript, um, official SAT or ACT scores. This year it is optional. Um, we're not sure about next year yet, but this year they are optional and one letter of recommendation. When you're accepted to Marywood, um, you automatically get a scholarship. So those range between 16,000 and 23,000 per year. Um, you can see them on your left here. And then on the right, there are also some other opportunities. Um, if you have any community service that you do, um, you know, through your high school or a church or a youth group or something like that. Um, we also offer talent awards, um, $750 and it goes up to 2000 um, for students that are interested in art or music programs. And then we also offer um, scholarships for transfer students as well. Um, so this will come on automatically with your acceptance letter, you'll get this and that way you can kind of figure out, you know, what Mary was offering you um, right from the get go. We are offering um, in person visits and tours. Um, so that is Monday through Friday, we're offering four times a day. And then on Saturday, we're offering six times per day. Um, we also have virtual things too, if you can't come to campus, um, personal appointments, we have admissions information nights, um, we're doing financial aid nights on um, zoom as well. And then we're always on Instagram every day at 4pm. Um, so if you have any questions that you want a quick answer to, you can sign on to Instagram and we'll get you an answer as soon as possible. Um, so my contact information is here. Um, my email and then my phone number and extension as well. I'll put it in the comments or in the chat rather. Um, and if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Marywood College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have St. Peter's University. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Britt. I am the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission here at St. Peter's University. Um, and just to a little bit about St. Peter's, we're a fairly small to uh, mid-sized school. Um, well, first, we're located in Jersey City. Uh, we're right across the Hudson River from New York City. This is in New Jersey. Um, it takes about 12 minutes to get from our campus to downtown Manhattan. So there's a lot of uh, opportunity for internships as far as that goes. Um, and like I said before, we are a fairly small to mid-sized school. We have about uh, 3,600 total students. Uh, our average class size is usually about 22. Um, but that's more towards your core classes. When you start getting into your major classes, it dwindles down to about 15 um, being the average class size. So you do get that individual attention uh, and that personal care that I think is so important um, for a college education. Um, I'm actually, I'm a recent graduate of St. Peter's. I graduated with my bachelor's degree in criminal justice in 2015. And I just got my master's last year in um, cybersecurity. And when I was a student in high school, you know, I know personal care and individual attention, they sound like buzzwords in a commercial. So um, I like to share my story. So when I was a student, I wasn't the best student academically. You know, I struggled a lot. I got C's and, you know, I was kind of happy with that because they weren't F's or D's, right? Um, so by the time it came for me to go to college, the transition was really tough on me. So for example, freshman year, I had to take a placement exam. Apparently somehow I did well in the math section because they put me in calculus and I had no idea what I was learning in that class. It was like another language, you know, there was like hieroglyphics on the board. Um, but my calculus professor, you know, he's seen he asked me if I wanted to stay at the class for a little bit of extra help. So, you know, I took him up on that opportunity and, you know, it became a thing. He would stay at the class with me for about a half an hour after almost every class just to help me understand what he literally just taught me in that class. And 
you know, and he's not the only professor that went like above and beyond like that. Um, it's really cool to just have faculty who genuinely care and about their students and they want to see them succeed. Um, uh, so as far as academics go, uh, we have our own school of business, our own school of education, and our own, we're really well known for our school of nursing. And we also have our College of Arts and Science, which houses most, the majority of our majors. Um, some of our more popular majors can be like biology, chemistry, um, criminal justice, uh, computer science, political science, um, just to name a few. And we also have a couple of five-year uh, programs that are great opportunities. They allow you to get your bachelor's and your master's degree in only five years. So just one extra year, um, you get a whole, whole another degree. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit just for the sake of time. Uh, we work with over 650 different internship sites in the city of alone, uh, city alone. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for internships. Um, I had I had four actually, one each year um, when I was a student as well uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we have plenty of study abroad opportunities. We're part of the international exchange program, and we also have individual partnerships. Um, and we know some students may not be able to take off for a whole year or a whole semester. So um, to go study in another country. So because of that, we also have week long opportunities that you can uh, participate in. Those usually are by department. So depending on which department you're in determines where you're gonna go. Uh, we are division one athletics. We're part of the uh, MAC conference of the NCAA. Um, these are a few of our uh, division one athletic programs. Um, since we're D1 school, usually most of our students are recruited. However, we do hold tryouts. We do allow walk-ons in the beginning of each season. Um, I'd say maybe 15% of our student athletes are walk-ons. We also still have the intramural and extramural uh, athletics in case you know, you're not into that whole competitive scene and you don't wanna be like on the ESPN or something like that, um, you know, just to have fun. We still have uh, opportunities for that as well. Um, about 51% of our students commute, 49% live on campus. Uh, we have over seven different residence halls, apartment style, suite style, and uh, like the general freshman style. Um, we're also five blocks away from a major public transportation hub called Journal Square. It's a big bus train station. You can pretty much get anywhere from there. So it makes us a very uh, easily commutable school. Um, and then as far as the application process goes, uh, I'm not going to get too much into it, but we just really need your application, your, trans your official transcripts from your high school, SAT or ACT scores if you choose to send them in. Uh, we are test optional, so you don't have to send them in. And then uh, two letters of recommendation and an essay. Um, I'll skip over that. So tuition is about 39,000 per, per year. It jumps up to about 55 if you're gonna live on campus. Um, you know, that's about average for a private university, especially one so close to the city, but it's still a huge number. We know none of our students will ever pay the full price. Um, that's because every single student gets a scholarship and our minimum scholarship is uh, actually 20,000. So just for being accepted, you're guaranteed at least 20,000. Our highest scholarship is a full tuition scholarship, uh, and there's a bunch in between. So there's a wide array of scholarship opportunities for you guys. Um, they're merit-based, so depending on your GPA and or your SAT scores determines the amount of money that you get. Um, we also accept any and all private scholarships, and um, about 98% of our students receive some kind of financial aid, and our average financial aid package is about 24000 So we do end up being a very affordable school. We actually start rivaling state school uh, prices at that point. So. Another personal story, when I was a student looking for schools, I probably applied to about like seven different schools. St. Peter's was honestly the most expensive one that I applied to. So I really had no intention on going there. I really just applied because my mom made me. Um, but she told me something I told to all the students I talked to. She said, Ryan, it's a free application. Everyone gets a scholarship. So, you know, why not just apply and see what kind of scholarship you're gonna get? So I was like, all right, my whatever. As I got my financial aid package back, my um, scholarship package back, and I was blown away with how little I ended up having to pay. I told you it was the most expensive school ended up being the uh, second cheapest out of all seven to actually attend. And the only other cheaper one uh, was actually community college I applied to. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. That's what made my decision to come here. And uh, the personal care story that I told you before, um, that I mentioned before, I don't think I would have made it, you know, pretty much anywhere else. So um, here's my uh, contact information. Um, if you guys want to just uh, take a picture, write that down. My cell phone number's on there. You could text me if you'd like. Um, but thank you very much. Uh, have a great day. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for St. Peter's University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up we have Salisbury University. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Colin Crow. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Salisbury. I'm also a Salisbury alum. I graduated in 2017. I was a business management major um, and I'm also from New Jersey originally. 
Um, this is my second year here at Salisbury as an admissions counselor. Um, and we are located on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, um, about anywhere between two and four hours away, um, depending on where you are in New Jersey. Our mascot is Sammy the Seagull. Um, we're just under 8,600 students. We're not too big and not too small. I call it the Goldilocks School, so that's just right size. Um, our average class size is 24 students with a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, our faculty are also amazing as well. Um, they all hold office hours before the class. Um, they, knew, they, did get to know, they get to know your name in class as well, which is pretty awesome. Um, as far as um, clubs and organizations go, we have 120 of them. And our tuition with room boards is around 32,758 a year. Um, and that's for out-of-state students. A um, little fun fact about the school is that we have notable alumni here. Um, Baltimore Ravens owner, um, Steve Bashotti and Purdue Farm CEO, Jim Purdue are some of our notable alums. Um, we also do have 21 Division three teams. Um, we're best known for football and lacrosse. Um, and then we also do have club and memorable sports available as well, if you don't want to play something for fun. Um, we also have, do have 46 majors and 73 minors across four schools and one college. Um, some of the more popular majors on campus include biology, um, any of our business majors. Um, nursing is also very popular on campus as well. Um, we have brand new pre-health and pre-med um, tracks um, within the College of Public Human Services. Um, that's great if you want to go into med school after graduation. Uh, most majors here at Salisbury do require to have an internship completed before you graduate college, which is great, um, that, given that working experience. Um, all of the majors here offer some sort of internship component or undergraduate research opportunity as well. Um, in addition, we do offer study abroad. Um, we offer um, sessions in the wintertime, in the summer semester. You can go for a whole semester in the fall or spring as well, even a whole year. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, just about all of the majors here offer some sort of study abroad component as well. Um, so on the campus housing, so we do guarantee on campus housing for two years, um, so freshman and sophomore year. Um, as you can see, these pictures are residence halls on campus, so they are really nice places to live. Um, all the residence halls have been renovated within the last five years. Um, we also offer, offer parking to all students on campus, so even freshmen can have a car on campus their first year. Um, it's also pretty cheap as well, um, only $75 for the whole year to park on campus. And because we offer or require students to live on campus for the first two years, um, we do have a pretty high on-campus living population. Um, if you do want to see more of these pictures, you can follow us on Instagram at flock to su um, We also have really good food on campus. So I have a meal plan all four years when I was a student at Salisbury. Um, most students also have some sort of meal plan all four years as well. Um, our dining hall has different stations that you can go to, like uh, pizza, burgers, vegetarian options, uh, make your own omelet for breakfast, so you will not go hungry. Um, we are also in one of the top programs in the U.S. for our dining, so we have, like I said, really good food. In addition, there's like Chick-fil-A on campus, there's a Starbucks cafe on campus, um, there's a cafe that um, has grab-and-go items, so um, you are not go hungry. Um, and freshmen have um, some choices between meal plans when they arrive. Um, you can get the all access meal plan, which gives you all access to the dining hall seven days a week. Um, and also, <clears throat> excuse me, gives you what's called dining dollars for any of the satellite locations like Chick-fil-A on campus or um, the grab and go uh, cafe. Now, as far as the application process goes, we do have three application deadline dates. Um, they're listed on the screen here. Um, early decision is a binding agreement. So if you get accepted to Salisbury on the early decision, you are required to attend for the fall semester. Um, that is the earliest deadline date and also the earliest response date from us. And also gives you the best consideration for admission and applying that way. The next best route though is early action. That's how I applied to Salisbury and that's how most students also apply to Salisbury. That's still an early deadline of December 1st and you hear back from us by January 15th. So it gives you plenty of time to come back to visit campus um, before you make your college choice by May 1st. Um, we're also a common app school. So if you're applying to multiple schools, um, you can use the Common App, you can submit one application to all the schools you're applying to. If you're just applying to us, or maybe a handful of schools that don't use the Common App, you can use the Salisbury University application. Um, these are all um, our class profile, uh, middle 50% SAT range, um, ACT range, and GPA. Um, we are a test optional as well. So if you don't have test scores because of COVID-19, that's okay. And this is what we look for, um, your high school transcripts, if you have test scores, you can send those test scores to us. We need at least one letter of recommendation from a guidance counselor or a teacher um, to complete your application. 
if you get accepted to Salisbury, um, you automatically get our Good Neighbor Scholarship of $6,000 a year for being from New Jersey. So that's an automatic guaranteed scholarship um, that you don't have to apply for. But you're also considered consider for any merit-based money automatically as well, based on your GPA. And if you have test scores, we use those test scores as well. Um, in addition, we also have numerous um, scholarships you can apply for on our website that open up typically in uh, December. Um, they range between a couple hundred dollars up to $5,000 a year. Um, and as, you, as I mentioned earlier, um, our out of state tuition is $32,370 a year before the $6,000 is applied. And thank you so much. This is my contact information below. And we also offer visits um, in person Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Salisbury University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Siwani, the University of the South. Hi everyone, I will be um, showing a video and I will be sure to stop it at six minutes. My name is Leticia. I am an assistant director of admission at Sewanee. Um, and then I'll also be putting in a few links to admission information and visit information in the chat. Welcome to Central Campus. Only about a thousand acres of the University of the South's 13,000 acre domain are developed. And today, we're gonna to show you around the central 100 acres where Sewanee students live, eat, research, recreate, reflect, and compete. Our first stop is the Quad, a calm green space cradled by buildings housing academics, co-curricular offices, administrative offices, and sacred spaces for worship and reflection. Carnegie Hall, the central building, is home to the Career Center and the Babson Center for Global Commerce. The Career Center, led by Kim Heisenrader, Sewanee class of 1989, focuses on career and graduate school outcomes. The Babson Center, led by David Ships, Sewanee class of 1988, provides co-curricular opportunities for our business and finance students and anyone on campus interested in business. Just a short walk from the quad is the University Wellness Commons, which is part of a network of common spaces across campus. Here in the Wellness Commons, the focus is health, wellness, and recreation. The Sewanee Outing Program, or SOP for short, is housed in the Wellness Commons and helps students of all levels get out and enjoy the 13,000 acre domain and beyond. All fitness facilities are open to everyone, not just athletes. Most of our athletes train out of the Fowler Center. Sewanee offers Division Three varsity sports and about 30% of students are varsity athletes. Food and knowledge of food are important for all Sewanee students to be able to perform and flourish. Next up, the Clerk Dining Hall. Every day as a Sewanee student, you'll wake up to an email from the director of Sewanee Dining, Chef Rick. In this email, he lets you know what the day's menu is, where some of the ingredients come from, and some healthy nutrition and wellness facts. 20% of McClurg's produce comes from the university farm where you'll find goats, chickens, and a large organic garden. Students tend to the Europe garden and work on the farm. Let's stop by Gaylor Hall next, an academic building that's home to languages, literature, and art history. It's right off the back patio of the clerk. Sewanee's curriculum requires students to cultivate strong writing and communication skills, and small classes ensure that students learn together and from each other while developing deep, personal relationships with each other. Sewanee is a place where you'll learn to write and write well. Every student takes classes that involve writing intensive components, so everyone from our biology majors to our politics majors know how to communicate effectively. Ayers Hall, down the sidewalk from Gaylor, is Sewanee's newest residence hall. Ayers Hall is one of Sewanee's 19 residence halls, almost all of which house students from a mix of classes from first year through senior students. 
This mix of ages and experience helps pull the Sewanee community together even closer as seniors and juniors can act as mentors and friends to first and second year students in a really valuable way. Sewanee offers singles, doubles, triples, apartment style and suite style living. Nearly everyone lives on campus all four years which means that we all operate closely as a community throughout that time. Welcome to Snowden Hall, home of environmental sciences and the first building on campus to install solar panels. In Snowden, you will run into many faculty teaching forestry, geology, environment and sustainability, and natural resources. Suwannee has one of the premier collections of environmental offerings in the country. The university features one of the largest active undergraduate research laboratories in the country as well. Our 13,000 acre domain, a living laboratory. Close by is Spencer Hall, our center for the hard sciences like chemistry, biology, medical sciences, etc. Spencer is a space that showcases how accessible undergraduate research is for our students at Sewanee. The professors who come to teach at Suwannee do so because they want to give students access to high level experiential learning. Whether you're presenting a paper at Scholarship Suwannee or working on a research proposal alongside a professor, it's all at your fingertips here. The labs give you a sense of all the resources that are available to Suwannee students. DuPont Library is across from Spencer and features the Learning Commons, one of the best places to study and socialize on campus. The Ralston Room on the second floor of the library is a state-of-the-art room built around some of the highest quality stereo speakers in the world. Our final stop is a beautiful one, back on the quad at All Saints Chapel. Generations of Sewanee students have enjoyed this space for reflection and worship. Three major events for undergraduates take place here. The All right, I think I am right at my six minutes. So thank you so much. And I'll be sure to put some links in the chat. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Siwani the University of the South, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Southern Illinois University. Okay, sorry about that. Hi, my name is Kennedy Lloyd and I am an admissions coordinator from Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Let's see. So to tell you a little bit about our university, we are a public research university located in Carbondale, Illinois, which is in Southern Illinois. We have about 10,000 undergraduate students on campus. And within that student population, we have over 100 countries represented. So we bolster a large international student population, which is really awesome. By the time that you include our graduate students, our law students, and our medical students, we have about 13,000 students on campus. At SIU, we have over 200 programs offered that range from almost anything that you can think of, business to nursing, to science-based programs, to liberal arts, um, anything that you can think of, we probably offer it and offer it with some unique specializations here. And so because we are a mid-sized public university, what makes us really great is that we have a small faculty um, to student ratio. So our current ratio is 13 to one for students to faculty. And what this means is that the majority of your classes are going to be between 20 and 30 students. Uh, less than 5% of our classes are 50 and more. And so what this means is that even though you're at a larger um, public university, you're not going to be a nameless face in a large lecture hall, but more often than not, you're going to get to have personalized interactions with your faculty members. And why that's important is because we are a research university, and specifically at SIU, freshmen can start research um, beginning their first year. And so having those connections with your faculty members and your professors and taking advantage of the opportunities that are on campus are definitely uh, more easy to um, obtain when you have those close relationships with them and, and just know what's going on in your department. Um, so we definitely recommend that students reach out and get involved in research starting their first year. 
One thing about SIU is that we work to invest in our students and offer education that is both quality and affordable. So with our tuition, we do not offer out-of-state tuition. Um, it is the same rate for both Illinois residents as well as domestic non-residents. And with that, we also offer legacy tuition. And so if your parents graduated from Southern Illinois University, Carbondale, you will receive a 20% discount on tuition. Additionally, over 90% of our students receive some sort of financial assistance, which we will talk about on the next slide. So if you are an incoming freshman, we offer merit-based scholarships, and these are scholarships solely based off your, of your GPA. So once we receive your transcripts and we process your admissions decision, with your admissions decision, you will automatically be awarded um, these scholarships based off of where you fall on the different GPA tiers here. Our minimum GPA requirements are 2.75, so just by meeting our minimum um, GPA requirements, you're automatically given that scholarship there. And then especially if you're a junior in high school right now, these are some opportunities that you can take advantage of. These are some of our competitive and um, early deadline scholarships. We have both our university excellence, which is $7,500 a year for all four years that you attend. And then we also have our chancellor scholarship, which is um, our full ride scholarship. That is your tuition, room and board and fees. And that is something once you apply and you're uh, apply before the November 30th deadline, you will then be invited to submit a separate application for the scholarship and interview about 25 students from our university are, um, are received the scholarship. And so it's a pretty prestigious thing to be a chancellor scholar here at SAU. All freshmen are required to live on housing for their first year. And so our housing is all suite style. So that means you won't have to share um, a bathroom with 40 of your best friends, just up to four. And so that means we have two double bedrooms that are connected with a shared shower and toilet. And then each of the double rooms has their own sink and vanity. Included in our housing costs is our anytime meal plan. And so that is not anything additional that you have to purchase, but it's automatically included in that cost. And as long as our dining halls are open, you can go and get however and whenever um, you need to get food. And then also included um, with our housing, and that's important to know, is that we have living learning communities. And so if you wanna live with the students who are in your college or in your major, you can elect to select a room that is just in a hall reserved just for those students. So one thing that is unique about SIU is that our mascot is the Salukis. I know I did not know what a Saluki was when I moved to this area and started attending SIU, but um, Salukis are a type of Egyptian hunting dog. And what's really fun is sometimes you'll actually get to see some on campus. So we have some real life Salukis that will walk around and visit us at games and whatnot. Um, so SIU, we are NCAA Division I sports and we are a part of the Missouri Valley Conference. So all of your major teams are included in there. Um, our basketball and our football teams are doing pretty well right now. So definitely check them out. And then we also have a new um, women's soccer team. So this is our current estimate um, for our budget for cost of attendance. So all in, um, everything included, it's about $25,500. That's for tuition fees and room and board. So it's a pretty affordable option. And especially when you take into account the different merit-based scholarships um, that we have. In addition, once students are admitted, they will also be able to submit our general scholarship application, which automatically applies them for over 600 scholarships. And time went by really fast. So if you want to apply, submit our online application. We have a $40 fee. Send us your official transcripts. We are also test optional right now, so you will not need to worry about that. This is my information, and I'll be putting my contact information in the chat as well. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Southern Illinois University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Last but certainly not least, we have Springfield College. Hi everyone, um, my name is Georgie Maver-Georges and I am an assistant director at Springfield College in undergraduate admissions. Um, so one fun fact about Springfield College is we're actually the birthplace of basketball. Um, a graduate assistant uh, student at Springfield College named James Nysmith actually created basketball on campus. Um, so our mission statement is the humanics philosophy. The cool thing about that is all of our students on campus know what our mission statement is. So it's to educate students in spirit, mind, and body for service and leadership to others. So this is a screenshot of our campus. Um, we have about 
Um, we're one unified campus. Um, we have all of our residence halls right around the Lake Massasoit that you see in the picture. Uh, we have, it takes students about mm, six to 10 minutes to walk from the residence hall to the dining hall or any of the on-campus buildings. So everything is relatively close. Um, we don't have a main road driving through campus. Um, leading back to that one unified campus. Uh, our students are guaranteed housing for all four years, which is super nice. Um, and there's a lot of involvement on campus. We're even doing some in-person programming right now uh, during the pandemic as well. So we have about 4,000 students and about 2,200 of those students are undergraduate students. Uh, we're super happy about our placement rate. So it's 98%. So within six months of graduating, our students are either um, enrolled in graduate school or have been uh, found employment. Um, community service is super important to us at Springfield College as well. It's not something that's required of our students, but our students choose to volunteer within the Springfield community. So we have 40 plus undergraduate degree majors. Um, some of our uh, popular majors is physical therapy, occupational therapy, athletic training, as well as physician assistant. Those are all direct entry programs. And then sports management is super popular, um, as well as sports journalism, and then our education courses. Uh, our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one, but your class sizes will be about 20 students per class. Um, if there are some entry level courses uh, that hold up to 60 students, but if there's a lab component, it gets break, broken down into three sections. Um, so you'll only have about 20 students per section. Uh, you have the ability to study abroad at Springfield College as well. And then we also have as an honors program and pre-professional program. So you would just have to let your uh, advisor know if you're interested in pre-dental, pre-law. Um, so if you're interested in that, they'll make sure that you're on track so that when you graduate, you can go into one of those uh, degree programs. So athletics is super important to us at Springfield College. Uh, we like to say we have a three-tier system. So we have club sports, intramural sports, and division three athletics. Um, one fun fact is that all of our full-time coaches actually have to teach one class on campus. Um, so our coaches are getting to know students in the classroom and outside of the classroom, and they understand the demands of academics. Um, you might've been up late studying for an exam and they might've been up late grading exams. We're in the top 5% of Division Three athletics as well. Um, and our students on campus have a lot of pride for being a Springfield College student. Um, majority of students you'll see walking around campus will be wearing um, Springfield College gear. Uh, and they all go on to cheer students on at intramural sports, club sports, as well as uh, Division Three athletics. So it's super easy to apply at Springfield College. You can just apply through the common application. There's a $50 application fee, but that's waived through the end of March. Um, you need an essay, your high school transcripts, SAT and ACT scores are actually waived for uh, this incoming fall. Um, one academic reference, and then a personal interview is completely optional. Um, so like some of the other schools, uh, we also offer merit-based scholarships at Springfield College. So that's based off your grade point average. If your grade point average falls below a 2.5, we also offer the directors of ward. Um, our tuition room and board fees are about five, just shy of 54,000, um, but no students end up paying that much. Everyone is guaranteed some sort of uh, funding from Springfield College. So there's also need-based aid, which is based off the FAFSA. Um, and typically our students will get some sort of financial aid from us outside of uh, merit-based scholarship. So if you wanna keep in touch with Springfield, we're on multiple social media platforms. We also have a specific Instagram and Facebook um, page for the class of 2025. Um, so if you want to learn more about other students in class of 2025, we're doing features right now of those students. Um, we'd love to have you at Springfield College. It really is a wonderful um, environment and a super awesome campus culture. Our buildings are absolutely gorgeous. They're all older brick buildings. Um, and we recently just made an adaptable uh, softball field. So Special Olympics, as well as the Miracle League 
um, come to campus and partake in using our softball field. But awesome, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Springfield College, please put it down in the Q&A down at the bottom. Uh, so I would in love to invite our presenters if they could turn their videos on and come back. That would be awesome because I have a question for them. And my question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we'll just we're just going to start in presentation order. So Marywood University, you are first. Sure. Um, I always suggest to students that I'm meeting with, um, obviously it's hard now to get to college campuses, but anytime you can actually step on a college campus and see um, what building you're going to be in for your classes or where the dining hall is or, you know, your residence hall, anything like that um, will definitely be beneficial. Um, set up an appointment to meet with the department that you're interested in studying. Um, the professors obviously know the program the best, so they'll be able to give you some good insight about what it's like to be a student in their program um, and utilize your admissions counselor as much as possible. Um, that's what we're here for so that's why we're giving you our contact info because we'd love for you to reach out um, so that's some advice that I would have for you guys that are going through the process right now. Awesome thank you. St. Peter's University? I thought I had a unique answer but I think Sarah took that at the end. Um, my advice would be definitely to take advantage of, of us your admission counselors. Um, a lot of times students will say you know sorry for bothering you and you know they don't realize this is my job. I'm here to help you with this process and to make it easier for you and, and to help you and your parents understand that. So definitely take advantage of your uh, admission counselors. Um, and uh, one more thing, you know, don't be afraid to kind of go out of your comfort zone. You know, it's, it's, it's very tempting to kind of just stay with what's comfortable for you, um, but definitely, you know, take some chances, uh, get out of your comfort zone a little bit and go explore. Awesome, Salisbury University? My advice would be what everyone else has said already to visit campus. Um, once you set foot on campus, that's when you really know if you're gonna fall in love with the school or not. Um, and also talk to us. Um, I love personally interacting with our students and families about um, the college admissions process. So um, yeah, we all put our contact information in the chat. So if you have any questions, reach out to us. We're very friendly people um, and we're happy to help you guys out. Awesome, thank you. Siwani? Um, so I also would, would say what everyone else has said, but I think, you know, in the interesting times that we're living in, one advantage I would say is that there's so many virtual options out right now. So take advantage of that. Um, and of course, I also advocate for stepping foot on campus when you can, but schools right now have so many more virtual offerings than they normally would. And so you can do things like take a virtual Zoom tour. Um, a lot of schools would have recorded sessions or just anything that you can maybe think of. It's uh, most likely going to be in a virtual version right now. So take advantage of that. I'm sure sitting in one more Zoom meeting is maybe not the thing that sounds like something you want to do, but um, take advantage of that. If you can, you can get a lot of information before you even step foot on the campus to be a lot more prepared for that visit when you do take it. Thank you. Southern Illinois University. Yeah, so what I love about all the panelists that we have today is we have a lot of different types of institutions. We have small private, we have public. And so definitely, you know, don't tie yourself to one type of institution and kind of to echo what Ryan said, be willing to take that risk. When I was applying for um, the transfer, I went to community college, was looking at transfer and I applied to like public universities and I ended up going to a small private college where I didn't know a single person and I don't regret it at all. So don't worry about what everyone else at your school is doing, do what's right for you and what's gonna best fit what your goals are. Awesome, Springfield College. Alrighty. Um, one thing I love to tell my students when I meet with them is make sure uh, you're putting some of your own personal flavor um, into your application. So I know when I'm reviewing applications, I'm reviewing them holistically. So I love to hear a little bit about the student, get to know you through your application. So if you worked throughout high school, if you were involved in clubs, sports, national honor societies, add all of that information into your application. Um, that's one of the awesome things that I love about my job is I get to connect with all these students. Um, so even if 
you have questions leading up to it, um, or you want to do a personal interview, or you want um, some feedback about your application, um, reach out to the individuals, your admissions counselors at uh, the institution. We're always super friendly and uh, always willing to help. Awesome, thank you all so, so much. I know I definitely learned a thing or two, so I hope our attendees did as well. So thank you so much for my presenters and panelists for this evening. Uh, you definitely taught us some amazing things about your institutions and thank you attendees for joining and learning about these amazing institutions. Uh, a couple of things before you quickly head out after you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear. Go ahead and give us some feedback. That'd be much appreciated. Also disregard the sign up for more sessions, but you can definitely check out other sessions that StriveScan or other uh, colleges and universities are putting on. Uh, but last but not least, if maybe grandma missed out on this evening, mom wants to check it out, dad wants to check it out, or maybe you just wanna relive the fun this evening, a recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash New Jersey. All right, y'all, thank you again so much for joining and I hope you have a great night. Bye everybody. Bye everyone.